So in all the car movies, all the lads in the pub, they're all talking about 10 second cars. So in this video, we're gonna look at a 10 second car. What is a 10 second car? What's the definition? How do you achieve a 10 second car? So is it possible to take your car into this elite bracket of exclusive cars that can run the quarter mile in 10 second times? We're gonna be discussing the power and the weight that we typically apply, some of the drawbacks that you would get with certain drivetrain configurations that may prevent you from getting a 10 second car and what you need to have in order to get that 10 second time from your car. <laughs> So a 10 second car is a car that does the quarter mile run with a 10 second time. So anything up to 11 seconds will be counted as a 10 second car. Some people feel a 10 second car should be 10 seconds or under, but the generally accepted definition of a 10 second car is one that puts in a 10 second time, even if it's 10 point something. So it's quite an exclusive range of cars that can actually achieve that 10 second time. And it requires quite a bit of dedication in the tuning department. There are very few factory standard cars that can get anywhere near a 10 second car. So in most cases, we certainly need to do mods and apply different upgrades to the car. So thinking particularly of the drivetrain, you are really gonna struggle with a front wheel drive car getting the power down. You can put super wide, super sticky tires on and that will certainly help. But comparing a front wheel drive setup with a rear wheel drive setup or an all wheel drive setup, it, it's a night and day difference really you will get much better quarter mile times much better lift off times if you've got a four wheel drive or a rear wheel drive setup transmission on your car so for that reason most drag racers and cars set up for the drag strip will be typically rear wheel drive and they'll have really big tires on the back with very very sticky rubber just to give the maximum amount of traction off the line so when tuning a car for the 10 second times, most people would think about adding power, but the critical thing is to look at the power to weight ratio. So if you can shave a bit of weight off your car, as well as increasing the power, that will have a twofold benefit really, and enhance the naught to 60 time, the acceleration time, and bring those quarter mile times down. So we're gonna look at some of the average weights and power figures, just to help you to determine where your power goal should be with your car. And in most cars, you can actually shave off between 50 and 200 kilograms relatively easily by choosing lighter wheels, ripping out some of the interior that you won't be using, like the rear passenger seats and the front passenger seat. Obviously, you need the front driver's seat. It's quite hard to drive a car if you've not got a seat. I'm sure someone's probably tried it with a beanbag. If you have, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how that went for you. I'm sure it, it wasn't a total disaster, but there's always someone willing to try these extremes. And then you can get into the more aggressive modifications where body panels and even the glass is replaced with a lighter alternative. So carbon fiber is often used in body panels because that's lighter than the metal counterparts in most situations. And also fiberglass is often used where that would provide a lighter alternative to the metal. And it's often cheaper to use fiberglass than it is to use carbon fiber. Replacing the windows with Lexan and Perspex, there's a whole series of safety issues and legalities involving switching out the glass. But there are lighter alternatives out there that will substantially reduce the weight of the car. In our forum, we've got a member who's building the ultimate Lotus land project and he's being absolutely fastidious about saving weight um, practically drilling holes in everything that's not load bearing to save a bit of weight actually weighing the components that are added to the car and just seeing if there's lighter alternatives even down to the bolts whether the bolts can be specified to be lighter now you always got to worry a little bit about strength when you go lighter you do often tend to sacrifice strength so there are certain areas of the car where strength and rigidity is much more important than saving weight but if you know your stuff you certainly can make substantial weight savings on a car and with most of the manufacturers they're pushing out cars that are quite luxurious they've got lovely interiors lots of extra weight is added to give that luxury feel to deaden the sound that you get from the road if you just want a track car that's doing the quarter mile run those things are not important to you so what does it actually take to make a 10 second car well you can see on the screen now we've got a table of power and weight ratios that will all produce an 11 second or 
I should say, a sub 11 second quarter mile time. So you'll notice at the very bottom end on the weight scale, you only need about 320 horsepower. Going up to 1,000 kilograms, that power needs to be bumped up to 400 horsepower. And now interestingly, it's definitely not a linear scale. For a 1,600 kilogram car, twice that of the 800 kilograms, you need more than twice the power. So 730 horsepower would be required to propel a 1600 kilogram car down the quarter mile in a sub 11 second time. So you can see here that as the weight starts increasing, the power requirement exponentially increases. So it really is an advantage if you can drop the weight of the car as well as increasing the power, especially if you want to chase those really good times. But it's not just a question of weight and power. There's so many other factors in determining your quarter mile time. Gearing also has a factor on how many gear changes you would need, the gear ratios and how the gear ratios are set up depending on the power delivery from your engine. So using our rough rule of thumb, you're looking at about 400 bhp per tonne. So for your average 1500 kilogram car, you would need about 683 horsepower to do a 10.99 second quarter mile run. Off, there's going to be transmission losses in any car even with the best design transmission around. And the other factor is the car's grip. Being able to put that power down on the road is very much down to the tyres, the way the differential's set up and the weight distribution of the car. With a manual gearbox, you are one of the biggest factors in determining how quickly you change gear and where you choose those shift points. So fuel types are also switched to achieve those quarter mile times. So conventional fuels compared to race fuels, even running pure ethanol, can be substantially reduced. Now, you've often got problems with switching to a pure ethanol, getting the car started, for example. So a lot of people will start the car on a standard fuel and then switch over to an ethanol-based tank. But there's lots of other higher octane fuels that can be used. We've got a video discussing alternative fuels and really how you get more power out of these fuels compared to your standard fuel that you would buy at the pump at the gas station. Another factor to take into account is the aerodynamic drag that you will have on the car. So that's a consideration that a lot of professional drag racers will take very, very seriously. As the speed of the car starts to increase, the amount of drag you're experiencing is also ramped up. But you also want some of that aerodynamics to create downforce, especially on the rear, to push those rear tyres into the ground to maximise your traction. So this video really is just scratching the surface. So I wanted to give you an aim as to how much power you would need in your car to get a sub 11 second time and achieve that aim of having a 10 second car. So we hope this video has been useful to you. It's given you an insight into building a 10 second car. You've got a good grasp on what a 10 second car is and how much tuning you would have to do on your car to achieve a 10 second outcome. So please boot that like button. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.